Explorers. This is your lead scientist, Miss Shirley. Today's lesson is what is a nature center? In this lesson, you're going to learn the habitat is a wetland habitat, that students will observe in this habitat, that they will hear bullfrogs, they will see red-winged blackbirds, egrets, and dragonflies. And students will track what they observe by counting the animals they see and record everything in their notebooks. In our last lesson, students explored the forest habitat on a field trip with the class to the nature center and learned the following. A nature center is a place where visitors can go to see different plants and animals in their habitat. And the use of a hand lens magnifying glass that helps see things up close. This is a scientific tool that is commonly used by naturalists. So let's introduce some words we need to learn for this lesson. Nature center is a place where visitors go to see different plants and animals in their habitat. And a magnifying glass is a tool that helps see things up close. Okay, science explorers, we are going to learn more about what is a nature center. And also, we're going to explore and investigate some questions on the Nature Center. Let's watch this video. Welcome to perhaps the most attractive location in the city of Fontana. If you're not familiar with it already, you are looking at the Mary Vagel Nature Center in South Fontana. Located at the foot of the Harupa Hills, the center has always been a place of natural beauty and education. It's unique. So how many cities have nature centers? Jordan Gionet is the coordinator here. He, his staff, and volunteers are instrumental in educating young visitors about wildlife and the natural world. Even getting off the bus, the kids see ducks and they are excited. They see squirrels and they're thrilled. Who knows what is healthy food for a duck? What's healthy wild food? Well, absolutely, we have a lot of animals. Do you know where else we have animals? Inside. What? On the inside, the kids were introduced to some fascinating creatures kept here to educate visitors. Let's start with the gopher snake. And she is actually pretty small comparatively. Gopher snakes could even get to be about eight feet long. So a big snake, but also a very common snake. Again, in its namesake, it will eat gophers. And that they can be a pest. If you have gophers around, you have too many, they're a good one to kind of equalize the balance. This variety of snake is the most common to be found here in the surrounding hills. Not so common to Southern California is this guy. So that, that is Kiko, and he's one of our rescues. He's a blue-tongued skink. He's actually an Australian native. So skinks, you can kind of tell they have uh, different scales. They, they look like almost snake scales on a lizard. And he has this very interesting blue tongue. And uh, when he sticks it out, it's, it's known as kind of a defense. Very confusing, bright color for a predator. So if they stick out that that blue tongue, it's enough to distract the predator so they can go and take off. Now meet the chuckawalla. But the chuckawalla is an herbivore, but it also ties into our Native American programming. The natives used to eat them. What chuckawallas do is they hide in crevices of rocks, and that's how they protect themselves from predators. But what they do is they inflate when they become afraid of something. And they do that to kind of wedge themselves into a rock so they can't get pulled out by a predator. Other ambassadors include the California king snake, the rosy boa, the tarantula, and more. By seeing and understanding these wonderful creatures, it is the goal of the center that these visiting students will learn to respect and not fear these animals. I think people are looking for this and they, they really want some natural you know, adventure to take. Join the adventure look up fontana.org. Experiencing the fascinating life forms at the Mary Vagel Nature Center, this is Glenn Ross for KFON TV.
Okay, science explorers. Now let's explore some more about a nature center. So I'll read this passage. Next, the naturalist takes them to a wetland habitat. They hear a bullfrog calling from wet pond. They spot a red winged blackbird clinging to a reed. They see an egret using its long beak to hunt for fish in the shallow water. They watch a dragonfly on a flower. The students count the animals they see. They record their observations in their notebooks too. Let's explore some questions, science explorers. Which of these describe the habitat of these three pictures? Please choose an option. Okay, science explorers. What do students observe in this habitat? Think, 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 student, science explorers, write your response. To summarize, how do the students keep track of what they observe? Think, 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 science explorers, write your response. Finally, what do you think of today's lesson? Okay, science explorers, we learned what a nature center is and what we find in a nature center. I hope you can visit one soon. Okay, until next time, ciao for now.